Hello everyone. Uh, I have been watching a lot of um, BDG videos. I think it full name is Brian David Gilbert, something like that. I'm not totally sure, but anyway, uh, he has a thing about choice, which I don't have, unfortunately. But to honor my gods, I have instead chosen for this crude approximation of a them in best, which of course I have completely burned up because. Honestly, what do you expect from me? Um, that is completely irrelevant to the rest of this video, but I wanted you to know because I felt it was relevant to my brand, if you will. Even after three videos and getting, I think, two views, which is fine. June book haul. Um, this was, I've been on a gap year for quite a while, longer than I would actually like to admit. But the point is, I usually have a lot of free time to read. The free time was um, a little less this month, so I didn't read as much. But I would say that I still got a decent amount done. And I'm also quite uh, satisfied with the amount of non-fiction I have read. So I kind of ranked them uh, by color for the thumbnail. And I don't feel like rearranging them by subject. So this is just going to be a random mess of books. First I read, I mean not first in the month, but first by colour, because that's the system we're going with, why am I doing it? Searching for Sappho. Sappho? Sappho? Oh. This lady. Um, it's by Philip Freeman and it's a biography of Sappho, but we know so little about her that really it's just kind of a very um easy non-fiction book about ancient greek so basically what it does because we barely have any of her poems let alone like a diary of her life that doesn't exist so he basically explains things um that you know he basically explains how it was in ancient greek for the average person you know now we know that Sappho was from um, a pretty rich merchant family, so not everything will apply to her. She probably had it a bit better than the rest. But it's still really interesting and there are a few points where he does um, insert a little bit of Sappho's personal information. Like he, he directly links it to this is probably a situation Sappho would have been in. And we know this or this from her poems. So it's not totally useless but there just isn't a lot to know about Sappho in general so if you're already familiar just history lesson wise with a lot of what being said in this book I don't really recommend it fortunately I was not I mean there were things where I was like oh yeah I think my history teacher told me that but I never would have remembered it if it weren't for this book so I was pretty satisfied by it also, it has um, all of her poems at the back, which, I mean, this is two pages of just words, which, which are all we have left, so that to really tell you something about why it's so vague. Then the next one, I also mentioned this in my latest book haul, is The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. Um, again, I meant to do it in my previous video, not gonna harp on it. I also finally read War of the Foxes by Richard Seiken. Richard Seiken makes me want to drive a car into a wall. But like not in a bad way, you know, like there are books where I just read it, specifically academic books because I feel obligated to finish those. Like if I read a bad book that isn't academic, I can just close it, throw it away, who gives a shit. But if it's an academic book, I feel like I'm might be missing out on some actually valuable information about the world and I feel a bit worse if I DNF those. Um, but yeah, the point is, those books, like those academic books that I don't know what on earth the author is talking about, those also make me want to drive my car into a wall. My car, I don't have a car. My metaphorical car to that only exists to express my emotion. I want to drive that into a wall. But this is different. This is like just the sheer intensity of it. And I have brought this 
ages ago after I read Crush and I was immediately like, okay, I have to read more by this author. Um, and then I just never read it. Like this has been standing on my shelf for over a year. Uh, and I'm Crush is still, I think my favorite, but like, I don't know how objective that is because I have really strong emotional ties to crush it was also just really impactful at the age that I read it which again it, it's like a while ago um so yeah but I also really liked it I felt like this one was much more coherent than crush um personally I'm not always the biggest fan of that in poetry I actually like kind of disjointed poetry I like poetry where the author is describing a scene really vaguely and just super specifically you know like he zeroes in on these poetic details without actually telling us what's going on the bigger picture and um, that's the kind of stuff that I love in poems I think this is really specifically like about art and it's really interesting but it it really kind of has a narrative or at least an overall theme to to stitch it all together you know into one big beautiful quilt and i like that less than crush which i feel was a little bit more disjointed but again i can't really say because it just makes me so emotional and i cannot be objective about crush by Ricky Steichen that next up I read Hamlet. I have actually finished it but I'm noting down some quotes that I marked so that's what the bookmark is. Um, I had to do the no fair Shakespeare function of Sparknote which honestly I highly recommend. Um, it helped a lot and this is the first time well I also finished King Lear but I finished it in like I could not tell you what that book is about. Here I felt like I actually understood it thanks to the um, modern language translation. And maybe that revokes my nerd card, but you know, I enjoyed it. It was like, I think I had too high expectations for it. Like, don't get me wrong, it was good. It had a lot of like, I mean, the quotes in this are weird, right? Because you have the, the, so much banter in the book, you know, so much actual jokes. And sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not, because it was written so long ago and that's not really my style of comedy. Um, but it, it felt... I mean, I watch a lot of video essays from a movie and they are a big fan on the term tonal dissonance. And it's just... I felt like that kind of in the series here like it flips back and forth between joking and being really serious very quickly and I kind of like it and I kind of don't I already explained why I don't like it but I also kind of like it because it makes me feel like the very serious bit maybe aren't so serious or like the audience like they're very serious for him but all right he's going through some shit but I feel like the audience is kind of meant to laugh at Hamlet sometimes. Like he's just, he's such a caricature of the angsty teenager. And that really wasn't what I'd expected from this book. I felt like it was kind of not that tired necessarily, but it really felt like it maybe wasn't something to be taken seriously by the audience. And which surprised me just like this isn't a comedy this is a tragedy and also it's Hamlet you know like you can't take Hamlet not seriously but that's kind of the sense that I got from this book um and I like that about it then next up is Gothic Horror by Clive Bloom um, Clive Bloom only wrote one essay in this book, it's actually a collection of essays, but he edited it, so his name is on the cover. Um, as with any collection of essays, hit or miss. There were some 
think that I liked um, FA that I thought were really really garbage like in a how did this get published garbage way but oh one fun fact Stephen King apparently did interviews for Playboy like the Diddy magazine Stephen King was, was in that like not in the sexy way just actually talking about horror yeah I, I googled it and Playboy is not entirely what I thought it was so that's weird I don't know uh, I found it actually quite interesting like the good essays were interesting but I think it's kind of a niche thing so I'm not gonna go on about it for too long it's my current read I am gonna save that for last colors be damned um, then this is the only graphic novel that I read this month I really really like this um, I think I might actually take this with me to suspect it's only for the art in it like there is one specific page at the beginning that I am completely in love with it is this it has so much detail in it like if you have a physical copy I really encourage you to just start here and just really study each circle because it is all so detailed, so mesmerizing, so atmospheric, it's completely incredible and it really, it does not drop in quality as the comic book goes on. Um, the writing and the storyline is, it suits the art style but I like it a little bit less than the art style because it's really the kind of storyline that you have to just go along with you know like with the art I like to really just look at it for I mean with the illustration um, that I just told you it was really a couple of minutes but with the story I would say that it's best if you just get to know these teenagers and then just go along with them don't question it too much it's really more of I think the purpose of the story is really more to create an atmosphere than to tell a story technically speaking you know like there are main characters there are side characters they go through stuff at the end there's kind of a revolution it, it's a narrative certainly but for example it wouldn't work as a movie it's too atmospheric it's really just it's very immersive but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense like things just kind of happen no real rhyme or reason which I, I don't think this book is going to be everybody's jam is what I'm saying but I really liked it mainly because of the art style but also because of the story uh, it's set in a different time I just, hold on the mid 1970s which I know absolutely nothing about um, I do feel like that may have kind of hindered my understanding of the story also because I, I mean I don't even know anything about contemporary teenagers even though I am one as I'm a nurse with no social life but then this is teenagers from the 1970s, which was a, in America, which was a totally different culture. So might have missed something there, might have been more coherent for somebody who was familiar with these types of people. But I really enjoyed it and I recommend it. Then my current read, The Wild and the Wicked by Benjamin Hill. Um... Not totally sure how I feel about it and I don't want to be totally sure or I don't want to act like I am until I finished it, which I haven't. I still have this much left to go. But it, it has good information phrased in a kind of annoying way. Like I don't really like the author and like his writing style. He repeats a lot of points and he's like... A little too shummy with the readers you know like you know those cool professors that are all like or like I haven't had professors yet actually I have but only for like three months it's complicated 
um, <laughs> that like those high school teachers who think that they're all hip with the kids and like I remember what it's like to be a teenager um, this dude kind of strikes me as one of those and I'm not the biggest fan of it um, but there is he makes good points like if you strip away the style there is some actual substance that makes it worth reading this book if you are interested in environmentalism um, and basically the point that this book is arguing which I probably should have started with my apologies is that we should protect so like environmentalism is um, an, an organization uh, a movement that seeks to protect nature and a lot of the time their argument is nature is so beautiful nature is gorgeous and mesmerizing and nurturing and that's why we should protect it and this dude is saying we should protect it but your reasons are really wrong and unconvincing to people who aren't on board with environmentalism and he argues that nature can be beautiful but definitely isn't always you know tsunamis, hurricanes, earthquakes, cancer, malaria those things are all also nature and you can argue that you know a hurricane is beautiful from an aesthetic kind of point but like come on it's, it's incredibly destructive anybody who has seen the news after a hurricane hit and like seen the people see the town it's not beautiful it's mesmerizing but very very awful and so we should protect it um, I mean we should try to avoid it but we should protect nature and this book kind of gives a couple of other reasons but I don't want to go into them too much because one just read the book I'm not your professor and two I haven't finished it yet so don't don't really know if I would recommend that I would recommend this if you're already interested in that if not this is not not the book for you okay oh I also read some ebooks which I wrote on this piece of paper and then completely forgot about uh red white and warrior blue by Casey McQuinston this is one of those reads where I finished got the core and I was like okay no academia no more academia for today because I finished it early in the day and I was just ugh, kind of hangover not literally but really tired and I just want to relax with a fluffy YA read which was what this was not really much more not really much less either it was it was cute it was fine it, it did a job um, then I also read Miss Dalloway in my Virginia Woolf classic so not really gonna harp on that even though I did harp on Hamlet and I also read Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill um, if you haven't read Nosferatu by Joe Hill uh, definitely read that one first or even only read that one because the jump in quality from Heart Shaped Box to Nosferatu is ginormous um, it wasn't a bad book but it was just kind of a really boring book um, it, it's just this couple this really dark couple um, not in skin color it's like a rocker a past rocker who lost his bandmates all kind of rocks and stuff you know kind of what I'm getting at and his super girlfriend ex super maybe he's rich as fuck so probably ex but uh, they get haunted by ghosts because one of his exes killed himself and they say that it's because of him spoilers it's not because of them plot twist plot twist plot twist but the plot twist they do original things with the characters but I have really hoped to see him do some original things with the ghosts themselves and with the concept of ghosts because uh yeah I know it, it, it felt a bit too much like all of the other horror books I read in my shoot didn't really do that much original with it then again I was published a while ago so maybe it was original back then it isn't now Nosferatu is the super original things with the idea of vampires so read that one 
Don't breed her a chick box unless she was just wild for any ghost story at all. In that case, go for it. If not, mm, not for Arthur. Definitely read not for Arthur. That book was amazing. Okay, that was it for this month. This is 20 minutes long. Seems like a good time to cut myself off. Bye.